everybody. Today we're going to have a look at two knives, split back whittlers from Rough Rider. A split back whittler isn't a pattern I've seen before in the flesh. I've heard the Apostle P talk about them in one of his From the Sharpening Bench videos and it was very intriguing. And then I realised that these little whittlers on Heine Haynes website were splitbacks. So I bought a couple. Okay, so this is um, how the two knives come. They are essentially the same knife with different handle scales. So we have the RR106 in the blue box and the RR155 in the brown box. And if we whip them open, standard little plastic Johnny bag. Same for the other one. And here are the two knives. So we have three blade whittling knives. Oh, straighten the camera up. Three blade whittling knives. Now the first thing of course we need to deal with is what's this split back business. Well, if we take this one, we have at one end the main blade, clip point, hollow grind, and at the other end we have a small clip point and we also have a pen blade. But the way the blades are sprung is what makes this a little bit unusual. You see there we have a gap between the blades and the angle of the blades to each other is unusual. The knife has brass liners, two brass back springs and a wedge shaped, sorry, two steel back springs and a wedge shaped steel separator. So each of the small blades rides on a single spring, but the main blade rides on both of the springs together. Because as the back tapers, the two springs come together at this end. So. What have we got different? Well, as I say, it's basically cosmetic. This one I bought first because the scale material is a bit unusual. I think Heine Hayes have got a couple of these. They might have a Stockman and possibly a third pattern. But I've not seen that anywhere else. It's like a worm groove. And the colouring is odd. It looks like white bone that has been stained with blood and as the blood's dried it's got that gone that funny reddy browny colour. Whereas on this one it's the fairly standard amber jig bone finish that you see on quite a few Rough Rider knives. Quick look at some specs. Closed length is just about three and a half inches, 90 millimetres. And the main blades are two and a quarter inches overall with a two inch, 50 millimetre cutting edge. And although the short blades, they are quite thick. I think they're two and a half mil from memory. Yeah, I think they're two and a half mil. So if we give you a, a size comparison with the usual Victorian Spartan, you can see that although the handle is comparable in length, the blade stops a good bit shorter. Fit and finish is okay. 
Um, along the back on this one is really nice. Nice and smooth and flush. However, the fitting of the rectangular emblem badge could be a bit closer. Whereas on the one with the usual shape Rough Rider badge, that's a lot nicer to fit there. But there's some little gaps on the scales where it's not completely flush. And between the layers, at the fat end on that one. But it's better on that one. So, I have seen Rough Riders with flawless finishes. These aren't in that group, but they're certainly good enough. They're not expensive knives. I think they cost me, oh, was it 13 or 14 pounds each? Let's see what they weigh. So in grams, what's that? 66 grams, which in English, two and a third ounces. So if you combine the length, about the size of a Spartan, the thickness is thicker at one end but thinner at the other, and a weight of two and a third ounces, I think it's quite a practical size as a general pocket knife. What I do like is the ergonomics. Because you've got a lot more metal at this end, with this big thick steel spacer and the two blades, it sits very well in the hand. Can't quite get four finger grip in my hands, and I've only got medium sized hands, but you've got a nice wide back for your thumb, and it is handle heavy. And I don't know if there is an official position on this. But my personal feeling is that for small knives where you're going to be doing delicate controlled work, handle heavy is good. Lots of people talk about the balance point and for other purposes having a central or slightly forward balance point may be good and obviously for a big chopping knife forward weighted is good. But I think having a handle heavy knife for small intricate tasks gives you better control over the blade. And what's the blade like? We'll try the main blades. That's fine. It's Rough Rider 440 razor sharp steel. Whether you would consider that razor sharp is oh, one thing. Um, it's probably 440A, I would have thought. We'll try the one with the wormy handle. That one, it's a little bit toothy. I wonder if we might have a little bit of a burr on that one. But the shape of the bevel, the edge bevel, is nice and evenly done. So it shouldn't be a difficult job just to strop that. Try a small blade, a little pen blade, that feels a bit better, still a little bit toothy, but sharp enough for most people. And we'll do the last one, uh, just the clip point on this one. And that's probably the best of the three. So, very interesting little knife pattern, for me anyway, because as I say, I've only heard mention of them in one place on uh, the Apostle P's video. And the only ones I've seen for sale are these budget friendly ones from Heine Haynes. With Rough Rider being your brand in both cases. So, we'll get on with some close ups and you can make your own mind up. Thanks for watching.